So today I want to talk about marks. And specifically, I just want to start out with one of the things that I like to do. So probably what sold me on this is if I make a selection here, and then I perform some command like yanking this text here, maybe that's not the command I intended to perform. Maybe I wanted to delete it instead. Well, instead of reselecting all of that, I can use the G key and the V key here, and that'll reselect the text. And then now I could do whatever I want. I could use X then to delete it, or I could perform some other command. I can undo that. GV again, I can select it once again. So that's one of my favorites. I think that's a good selling point for marks. Basically, there are spots in the file that are automatically marked in some cases. And then in other cases, you actually can lay your own marks kind of like a bookmark. So let's say I want to jump down to this line here with payments. I can use the M key and the A key. In this case, I actually can pick any mark I would like from A to Z. And then let's say I go back up to the top here, doing something else up above. Maybe I want to add an import, for example, and then I want to come back down to where I was at. Well, now I can use the single quote here and then A, and that'll jump me down to where I was at. I could always come up here and I could set another one. I could do M and B here to set a different mark. Now, if I do a single quote and A, jump down, single quote and B, jump back up. So now I can move between the various spots I'm working with. And one way I think this is helpful is when I'm inside of a Jupyter notebook, basically, and I wanna jump down through the various cells. Sometimes there's a spot I'm working with to run the code and then another spot where I'm editing I don't want to split the pane and do something else. I can basically jump up to one spot with A, jump back down to another with B. And that's an easy way to jump in between the two locations. So M is to mark, and then a single quote is to jump to. And actually, there's a variation on that as well. Let's say, I don't know, I put my cursor right here on the end of the word processed on the E. If I go ahead and mark that for C, so I mark that with M and C. Now, if I jump down to A here, if I want to come back to where I was exactly at, if I do single quote and C, I jump to the beginning of the line, the very first character on that line, not even the beginning. This would be the beginning here. So I jump to the first character, but if I want to jump to the exact same character as well, so the line and the character, in that case, use a back tick and then a C. And I'll take you to exactly the character and the line that you are on. Now, one thing I would recommend as you're getting started here, you might have seen this already. When I hit the single quote here, and if I wait long enough, you can see this screen pops up at the bottom. I've got this panel. This is from a plugin called Which Key, which will show you which key you can type next in a sequence. And in this case, you can see here, most of this revolves around the various marks that I've been using. For example, you can see here's A, B, and C. And then on the right here, sometimes you even get an explanation of what exactly that particular character is going to do. Like a single quote again here, we'll go back to the line in the current buffer where I just jumped from. So if I do that again then, so basically two single quotes, and then you can see I jumped to the very beginning of the line, which is where I was at before I jumped to the character E that I was sitting on. And in the list here, you can see another interesting combination of marks here would be the less than and greater than signs. That has to do with selections, like I was just showing you a moment ago. So if I do the greater than sign, look at that, I jump up to where I was at when I made my last visual selection. And if I do single quote and less than here, that jumps me up to the beginning of my last selection. And that's why you can do something like GV, because it's got both of those marks to be able to select some text then. And an interesting thing here, basically, if I wanted to change my selection here, maybe I want to just select this one paragraph. Well, in that case, I could alter my selection. All I have to do here is M, and then I need to do a less than sign, and that will change that very first mark. And so now if I do a GV, you can see it just selects this one paragraph. So I can basically set the endpoint and the out point for some text I want to select. In fact, I could just come way up here. I could add the beginning point here. So M and then less than, and there you go. If I do a GV, now it selects all four paragraphs. Another interesting use case here, if I want to select and maybe delete a bunch of text, instead of needing to select all of it and dealing with the fact that I have to scroll, instead, let's just say I want to delete everything after this point and then way down below. The first thing I can do then, I can lay down a mark here. I can do M and A, for example. And then if I come way down below here, maybe I want to delete all of that text all the way through here. Well, in that case, then I can use D, I can use single quote, and I can use A, and that wipes out everything between where the mark is at and where the cursor is at right now. Same thing would work, of course, if I undo that. I could also do something like yank everything in between by doing Y, single, and then A. There you go, I've yanked all that, and I could paste that all in again. And now... You can see I have two copies of that text that I selected and then pasted. And maybe another helpful way to figure out what your marks are when you're learning, there's a command called marks that literally just shows you the marks that you have. 
So these lowercase letters are specific to the current file and buffer that you have opened up. Whereas down below, you can see actually I've got a capital A here. So what does that one do? Well, first off, let's jump to it with single quote and capital A. So that's the line with the mark there. So the neat thing about capital letters, if I were to open up a different file here, and then I'm working on this file, maybe I want to jump back to that spot in the other file. In that case, then that's where you use single quote, capital A, jumps me right back to the other file. So capital letters span marks across multiple files. So if you need to edit two different files and jump around a lot, can be a great way to move between two different spots. Now, there are a ton of different marks that you can use. It'll take some time to learn them. So what I do is I'd open up the help for marks here. And I would just have this available while you're learning and scroll through the list of what you have as options here for all the different nuanced special characters. Like here is the single quote and the less than that we talked about for moving to the start and then the end here of a selection. There's a bunch of these available. Just refer to this or that which key. I'll go over a few more though. So let's say I go into insert mode here and maybe I delete something. And maybe I jump to the end of the file and I do something here. If I want to go back to the spot that I last edited at, in that case, I can do a single quote and a dot. And that takes me exactly where I made the last change at. So that's useful. But another way to actually do that that I like actually is just to hit the U key to undo. It'll take you back to where you're at and then control R to redo. So you can use undo redo like I usually use. Or if you can get it through your thick skull, which I haven't done yet, you can use the dot key to jump back to that last spot and then you don't have to undo anything. And along with that, there's yet another one. If I go into insert mode somewhere, maybe I'm moving around, I'm deleting some stuff, adding some stuff. Maybe I put some text in here. Maybe I move up here. I'm still in insert mode right now because I want to make a change to this line right here with the discounts on it. Well, if I need to go do something else first, then if I exit insert mode here, jump up to the top of the file, grab something, I want to go back to where I was at, where I exited insert mode. That's going to be single quote here. And then I'm going to use the caret key, which you can see right here in the output. You can see there's a caret key. So I'll use that. And so that jumps you down to the beginning of the line that I was on. Remember, single quote brings you to the very first character of the line. If I wanted to specifically jump to the spot that I was at, not just the line, that's where the back tick and then the caret in this case. So that will take me back to where I was at when I exited out of insert mode. All right, there may be one more here, another special one. If I were to exit out of a file here, exit out of NeoVim entirely here, close it all out. If I come back in and I want to jump to where I was at, there's a mark involved in that. So you can see I jump right back to line 121. If I go 10 up here and I exit here as well, if I open back up, you can see I'm back on 111 now. So the position of my cursor is stored for me and it's actually restored via using a mark. And I've actually got this in my NeoVim config over here. I've got a line set up here in some of my initial configuration for NeoVim that when I open up a buffer here, basically, I'm going to jump right to the line then that I was at, and I'm using the double quote here. So single quote and double quote takes you back to the last spot you're at when you exited out of a buffer. So for example, right here, if I'm on line 39 on this greater than sign, if I just exit out here, open things back up, that's how I restore my cursor exactly where I was at. And actually, I don't use single quote. I use the option with the back tick here to jump to the exact character that I want. Technically, this over here actually was just some logic that I added to make sure that I don't try to jump to a spot that doesn't exist. So yeah, make sure that you remember there's a marks command. I think that's your entry point to figuring out what you might be able to do. You have the mark on the left here, the character. You have the line number and the column number associated with it. And then you also usually have either the file or the text inside of it, maybe even both in some cases. We'll see, let me jump to a different file again for that capital A one. So over here now, if I do marks in this file, you'll see they're different here. Now, for example, I don't have the lowercase letters because I hadn't been using these in this file. Now though, I do have the uppercase A, and in this case you can see, yeah, it just refers to the file in this case. I didn't know if it would show the file and the text. In this case, you can see the file that it'll jump to on line 12, column 14. So when I do that then, if I go to single quote and A, jump me right to where I want, or I could actually do back tick and capital A, jump me to the end of the line exactly where I was at. So if you haven't used Mark yet, it's definitely something you should try. Maybe see a few use cases where it's actually valuable to you. Like I, for example, really like being able to reselect text. So if you like that, then I think that would be a good entry point. Once you've done that, you get familiar with it. Then maybe you want to branch out and use Marks for other things. And like I said, a really good use case for Marks is when you're inside of a Jupyter Notebook or basically a Python script that you can send to a REPL. In that case, it's nice to be able to jump 
down, run some code, jump back up and edit something, and then jump back down and run it again. That's really convenient.